Mike Kaplan, please. I wanted to tell a story about myself, about a certain feeling that came to me this week for a certain reason. And then it says, I could say, They said that it's also to have an iPhone, it's also to look at it. Of course, there are kosher iPhones, but the real tzadikei ador say that unless you really need it, you shouldn't have it. This week, I was by my daughter, Tila on Shabbos, I was by my daughter, Tila Brahm. And during the Shabbos, my son-in-law mentioned that um, for some reason, I forgot why, that we were talking, I think what we, we were talking about uh, listening to the radio or something. So I said that I don't listen to the radio. I don't turn on the news like some people I know, that they turn on the news every hour on the hour when they're home. I don't do that. The only time I turn on the radio is to hear the Chazones on Friday. There's a program of Chazones on the radio. And even that, lately, I don't even have a radio because it got broken. So I'm thinking to buy a new one. But I didn't yet do it. And in this, it's all right to be lazy. It's mutter to be lazy in this scene. So I said that the only thing I listen to is Hazonis on Friday. And even that, to tell you the truth, even that I don't listen to the whole program because usually almost every Friday I get phone calls. It's only the end of the week I get phone calls from my children, Baruch Hashem. I always have to be happy when my children call me up. And then there's uh, the producer that his name is Yeshua Mayer calls me up sometimes, more than sometimes. <laughs> and, and then there's somebody, Mayor Simcha Rinell, that he made it a minute to call me up every Friday to talk to uh, the Ray Terra, which is very nice of him. And he also calls up in the time that the Gemara calls Bay Shimshi which means close to lip benching. And I could hear the way he's breathing, that he's walking, and he's walking while he's talking. I think he's on the way to the mic, or back from the mic. He made a quiz to come. Because it doesn't always work, so it doesn't work, so what? So I don't hear the chazon, so the truth is, I really appreciate chazon, you have to be a certain maven, and I believe there are people that are maybe, but I'm not. But one thing I can say, it gives you a certain hargosh in the pirish. If you if you know pirish amilos, if you think about pirish amilos, the meaning of the word, you can really, and you think about what the words mean while you're listening to the chazones. Sometimes you can feel something. Then I'm talking about myself. I don't know what others feel. So we mentioned that the producer or whatever, I don't know what you call him, the one that, that makes the program, his name is uh, Mordechai Sobel. And he's one of the greatest me, experts on chazones in the generation. And he speaks of it and he tells a little bit about each chazon. And he was halach lolomo a few days before Yom Kippur this year. He died. And then we mentioned that. And what he's actually, he's a conductor that he conducts concerts, uh, real, real concerts. And I don't mean this Mordechai Ben David thing. He's, this is a real producer. I mean, uh, what's it called? A conductor. So, so he died a few days before him Kippur. Now, my son-in-law mentioned that at the Leviah, to the 
the famous Chazen Health Good said, Kel Molly Rachman by Levi. And they saw it on the screen on the computer. I don't know what you call it. You saw it, you can see it. So I was very curious to see it. So I much I said to my son, I said, could you send me this health good saying they killed Mother Rachman at the Levi of Sobel? So he said, okay, so he showed it to me. It was in the airport, I mean, he's like, what's the Indian? It's like, it's a little bit funny, what's the Indian to say they killed Mother Rachman in the airport before the plane took off from America bringing him back here? Okay, as he said, killed Molly Rachman in the airport, and then they brought him here, and then once we saw that, okay, so he said, kill Molly Rachman, very nice, health good is good, I could also appreciate him, and, uh, and then, once we saw that, so we saw the Levi here in Earth Israel, and the husband of the chief rabbi Lao, which is very unimpressive. But okay. And then they made, I think this was in the base of Levias, they had a concert singing, singing uh, different uh, two or three pieces of chazanes. They covered the nifte. Which it was, you yeah, have to say, very miraculous to listen to the chazones. They were singing a whole choir together. And they were singing, Psach Lonu Shah, Beis Nila Shah, Kipono Yom. You hear a whole group of people singing it together. And uh, with this serious Negan of Nila. It was a very strong feeling of the East Nila Sha person is going away, leaving this world, the real Nila Sha, not just the Nila. I mean, every year it's also a real Nila Sha, but this is a Nila Sha in our life. And it was very, very, it was very, very miraculous to hear that. Now, I was thinking, I mean, but the uh, K was very good, but what, what, what is he going to bring up there? What's he, what's he going to show when he gets up there? Uh, good. I mean, uh, what are they going to ask him? Yes, so what did you bring? He'll say, I brought, I brought uh, all these pieces of canzone. He said, they'll say, yeah, but that's not what you bring over here. Here, there's something else you have to bring. I'm actually going to answer this poor Nishama. But then I thought, no. I remember the Gemara and Tainis. That the Gemara says there were two people. The Yohanavi said, these are B'nai Olam because they're Mesameach people. Inchi B'dichi Anan. They're Mesameach people. They're B'nai Olam Maybe he was... I don't know if the word Mesameach is so good over here, fits over here, but he, he gave it, he, it doesn't have to be, Mesameach, he made a good feeling, people liked it, people enjoyed it. I went to, I mean, I went in, we went to a concert, I went with my two boys to a concert in Heichal Tarbut in Tel Aviv, and they hear health good. And there were little men there. And of course, I think most older people they were, but they were, they were sitting there. And I heard somebody saying that they're going back to Ashdod. That means that they came from Ashdod to hear help hear the night of Chazon. The people it gave people a good feeling. I mean, just imagine what would these people do. They wouldn't have this this night of, of chazon. They would go out there by the Israelis. There's a word they say to be go out to be mevale. Now the literal translation is to be mevale to to let something be used up. When you wear a baggage, you say blow by bolui. It means it's it's used up. It's 
it's torn <coughs> so old blows you have a few times in the Mishnah blows the, the, the clothing that was used up they would go out to use up the time with nothing nothing emptiness isn't it better maybe I mean at least here they hear a posse singing a posse I mean uh, uh, I go every week once a week I go to to Nachlau, to Zeshin, Svasem, to Bochum. So on the way you go through a Chopetzal, it's just, it, it bothers me to see. I mean, Hashem should help me, that should continue to bother me, and I shouldn't get used to it. You see people sitting in these uh, kiosks and in little restaurants, wasting their time, mamish, mamish, wasting, wasting, doing nothing. And you think to yourself, so let them learn medicine. Let them study medicine. I mean, I'm not talking to you say, he can't learn a blood more. He can't learn a pasik homish. Who can't learn a pasik homish? I don't know. He doesn't know what it is. So go study medicine and help the world. Or something else, or drive a taxi. But what? They're sitting around doing nothing. But that's the world. It's, it's a musag, it's a concept in... The Gaisha world sitting around doing nothing. Ahman or Islam. That culture was brought over to us here in Eretz It's awesome. So that's what they would do here. At least they came and they heard something that is connected to the old generations of Yiddish kids. Very good. But. And and help good sang a nino Hashem a nino nino a kevus and a kevrom and a pachad yitzrak a nino nino veryak and this Mordechai Salbo he did a big big chokhm what did he do he took help good and he put it together with with Moshe Kusevitsky's voice singing that on in which Moshe Kusevitsky probably died who knows when 50 years ago and maybe less maybe more um, and he took a, a recording of it and Elfgood sang part and he sang part and the, it's also a chokhm in itself how to put together the two Two people sing together. So it's all chachma, like who should sing this part, who should sing this, that part. When should they sing together? And they put it together. It was so beautiful. Your mom has felt like the gates of heaven are going to soon open up. The way that piece goes, it's like you, you, you can feel a person begging, begging, begging. And they know me. And... Anenu avi is so me, manenu. Anenu die on all monos, anenu. You mamish feel like the heaven is definitely going to open up and answer in this chus of Yisomim in this chus of all monos. And I'm sure that when we say this, Anenu Hashem listens and he opens up, he does open up the heaven and does listen and we don't realize it. Uh, maybe our amuna is weak. So, okay, and this all sober, did it? And he said it took him two weeks to put together the voice of health, good with Maneno, and the voice of Moshe Kusevitsky's Chusev Yagin, uh, I don't know, I don't know. So, mm, saying, so that was sober. So we watched his Leviah on the screen, on the computer. Now, after that, once Avera Guerrero is Avera. No, no, I should never have looked at it. I never have seen it. I had to look at it. And I was more at her because it's Chazonis. What is it? Zachako. And once I had that, we saw the Leviathan, and my daughter and son of them put on another piece. There's a new star in the Haredi world, in the world of singing, that you call it a singer, a zamar. I don't know if he's called a chazan or a singer, and there might be a difference, I don't know. A young woman, her name is Motish 
Steinmetz. And he is, I think, a visitor. Mom is young, maybe he's 20, I don't know, or maybe 22, maybe 25 the most. And he has a beautiful voice. And he became a singer. And they showed him singing a new song. Nafshi Chomdo Betzel Yodecha. Adas Koros Yodecha. And then is the next line they sang the this the first line of Anim's Mirz. Then he sang the last line, Yerav no Sikh Words that when you think about them they're they're so powerful. Fire. Ruchnias Nafshi Chomdo to where to be Betelya Decho. What do I want? To be with you. Lodas Koroso de I wanna know your secret. Yeah, no Sikhi Allah my Sikha Sikh is the 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 lowest level of Dibu. You know, because my old feelers are only Sikha, I don't feel that I'm really misspelled the right way. Let it be sweet in your eyes, I'm asking Hashem Ki Nafshi Saru Gelecha. Because my nefesh it strives towards you, wants to be close to you. So be my, so be machshiv, my sikhi, my sikhi. Beautiful words, uplifting words, spiritual words. And he sang it with such a beautiful song. And not only that, he has a very beautiful voice, this multi statement. And now in the outside world, there's another thing here, that he sang it together with some person, their name is Yishai Rebo, an a singer, so he's a singer, he's from, but he's already comes from the outside world, I don't know where he comes from, he's not a Haredi, but maybe he's becoming a Haredi, and he dresses, we wore a t-shirt, and pants, uh, this kind of, I don't know, you call it pants with pockets on uh, uh, the front, and, uh, you know, like you on the bum in a soda bar, if a person comes from the shook bar, I was once in, uh, in Moshev Nov in the Golan, and I was sitting there in the shul. I mommy saw Odom Bob, there's somebody, Ben Chorim, there's somebody, he's a famous character by some. He's, he's from, uh, he comes from his field, he has a field of Adasim and fields of Zeshim, and he works by Soda, and he runs into shul. Odom Bob, I saw the hair of the Gemara says. With his, with his clothes from the soda, he comes, but he davenings, I got kishmake davening, you see, davening. So, 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 so this person is dressed just like that Ben Harim, but he was Bahamas bombing a soda by her mamas, but this Yishai Reba wasn't bombing a soda. And he was dressed as if he was bombing a soda. And, and, and the Mati Steinman was wearing a strimal. He is a Hasid, wearing a beautiful strimal and a beckett and white socks and he has long pages and he's very good looking a beautiful face he has and mommy said your fate to every fate marry you could see in him and he gets up there and sings the nafshi chumda batil yodecha vodaska russia beautiful beautiful voice he has and then when he finished singing the first line, he made a graceful motion with his hand towards Yishai Rebo, as if to say, now it's your turn to join in. I'm sure it's a, it's a show. I mean, he doesn't know himself. They practice a long time together. He, he knows himself when he's supposed to join in, but it's, it's part of the show, I, I think. And, and then he's Yishai Rebo sang another line, and then they sang together, and they sang and sang. And then they put their arms one around the other one's shoulders as they, when they finished, as they were finishing. 
and everybody clapped. And it was so beautiful. Then, but while they were singing, there's lights shining on them. And they keep changing the color changes from red to green to purple to pink to yellow. The colors keep changing. You know, and I don't mean every second it changes. Every few seconds it changes. And there are lights shining from here, shining from there. It looks like such a success. It's it's like the whole Chitonius is showing on a some kind of a how would you say it in English? I don't know. Um, a glamorous maybe is the word. It's so glamorous. I'm not sure if I'm using the right word, but I maybe. And this guy, he looks beautiful. This this Marty Steinmetz with his Hasidic lavush and with his voice and with his motions of his hands. Now, okay. I saw that and I enjoyed it. But after as I was going home, there something was bothering me. Something was bothering me. And I was thinking, I was thinking, I was thinking, what's bothering me about all this? I was thinking later. First of all, I don't think I did the right thing by watching this. And I know that not everybody's gonna understand what I'm saying. I've a little rabbi man. I, like Rab, Abram Eliot Kaplan said, Lola Rab, not talking to Rabim, I'm talking to the Yechidim that are going to understand me. I felt that I did the wrong thing. First of all, when you see a picture, like they say, a picture is worth a thousand words, I think there's a thing. You see a real picture of a real person, of anything, it makes a much, much stronger impression on your brain, on your mind. Especially now, now it could be that it's only me that I don't see these Kaylee and I don't see these pictures, and I don't see videos, I don't see anything. Baruch Hashem, Shalosam Chalkeinu Kohem Vigaraleinu Kohamonum Vivdilonu Minatoim. So I don't see these things. So if I see it once, it makes a strong impression. The impression of this picture stayed in my mind for a while. And and what's the message that you get? I mean, everything. That first of all, that itself, that the impression. I don't know what the impression is. The picture stayed in my mind. It stayed in my mind. It's like it was stamped on my on my consciousness. This this picture, this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful picture, beautiful video. It was stamped on my. Now, what do I need this for in my brain? Why do I need that? That such a picture should stay in my brain. I mean, my brain uh, uh, should be used for other things. And I know you might say there's room in your brain for everything. True, but but it doesn't go that way. It's it's not physical room. It's mental room. And when you have something that makes a strong impression on you, it 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 takes up parts of your personality. Now, I don't know if that can be measured in Kamuyot, I said in uh, in quantity it can be measured. It's, it's, it, it does something to your, it moves your personality, gives your personality a certain shake, which which we, we don't want that our personality should be influenced by things outside of the base measures. Yeah, yeah. No, I know that a lot of people won't understand it, but this is what we want. We want that we should be Miyoshve Beisa Medrish below Miyoshve Kronos. We don't want our Chalik to have a Chalik in Yoshve Kronos. I'm not judging this singer. I'm not judging him. I mean, what doesn't a person do for Parnosa? He probably needs Parnosa. And they say that he's divorced. Which who knows why? I once saw in uh, some interview that he doesn't want to talk about it. Of course, he doesn't want to. What is he a blabbermouth like somebody I know, like Daniel Kaplan? He doesn't want to talk about. It. Okay, but um, but he's the word I say it could be that he doesn't have a wife, and I'm sure that it's bonus try to lay sure, but him, who knows what? And which is a problem, and. 
and 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 you, you, and you see this, this this is not what our world was meant for yeah 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 and the, those that don't understand me are gonna say so what a person is supposed to be born a person is supposed to be closed in you're supposed to live in a cellar you're supposed to live in a dark room is that what you want I'm not telling anybody what to do, but I'm telling you what the real surah of a yid is. I think, let's take a yid, like Rav Chaim Kanevsky, yeah, he's closed in a room his whole life. Take a yid like Rav Steinman, closed in a room his whole life. Yet, I think that Rav Steinman was one of the people in the world. I think he was most besinned. You say there every day. You learn the Gemara. You see new things. You see new things all the time. The same Gemara you've been learning your whole life. You always see a new thing. He said to Shurim and Chumash, Chumash and Rashi. He saw new things in the Chumash all the time. He was a happy person. And the same thing as others. And not only. I don't have to go to such big people like that. Even Benunim. Uh, Rabbi Kaplan, speak up a little bit. You learn a Gemara. You start thinking about the Gemara. All of a sudden you see new things. This week, I was thinking, the last two or three weeks, the city of we, we started Shabbos, which I didn't really want to learn Shabbos in the Kolobos. But once you learn, I have to say Chaburus. You're learning the Sugi of Dav Gimel, Kakiris Gufa, Kakiris Chaifetz. First time I learned that I was 12 years old. Second time I learned that I was 14 years old. Later I learned it again and again and again. And I started thinking, meditating, hazarding over and over. All of a sudden, I started seeing new things. I started saying Chaburus on it. I felt good about it. What am I missing? Nothing. There was once, I read a book. I read a book about the Anusim in Spain. Some professor that he wrote a whole book of uh, on the, what he found in the in the in the archives in different places about the Anusim in Spain, and they used to prosecute a Jew just because they heard him say a certain certain thing in favor of Judaism. They were they would prosecute him and and, and uh, they burnt him and at the stake. There was somebody that he converted to Christianity, but they once heard him. He said. In a group of Yidin, he said, Yidin, when you say Nishmas on Shabbos morning, the world belongs to you. That means to say you're the most lucky that can be in the world. The most Ashrayoish that could be, you say Nishmas Shabbos. Man, look at look at the Musagim that I'm a Shumit had about the not Nishmas good when when he when he was living in the same who the 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 people that were in the same world as him were who knows who the Ran the Rivosh the 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 the, the, the Le'olam were were living in that time, but it still was a very bad time. And he said these words, Yidin, when you say Nishmas, the whole world belongs to you. I'm saying, I'm saying, you're to say that that's where we, this is what we should strive to. Our satisfaction is supposed to come from a Gomorrah, from a Tosis, from a base Medrash, from a Nishmas on Shabbos, even from a benching. We're so used to be benching. We say it, we don't even pay attention to what we're saying. Hashem feeds us. We should we should stop to think when we say Azona Solom Kulo Betuvo. We should remind ourselves what did we eat in this meal? Bread and what else? And this and this and that. Remember what did you eat? What was the Zona Solom? And think a minute. Hashem gave you this bread. You brought you bought it in the Makkah, but it went through a whole process till it got to Makkah. Hashem created the process, the Dalich, till it got to you. Just think of that. That can bring tremendous satisfaction to a person when he thinks, when he thinks this, when he mentions. So now, this is 
this is supposed to be our world. Hashem wants us to be besimcha, and He wants us to enjoy ourselves, and He allows us to do mili deshdusha, like it says, just to be besimcha. And maybe hearing chazonas is also mili deshdusha. True, but the tach, what is the tachlis? The tachlis is to enjoy Torah and to enjoy mitzvahs. Now, seeing a video of such a thing, of somebody standing up from our world, from what looks like the holy ones of our world, and seeing standing up there on a stage and singing beautifully and looking good and well-dressed and colors are changing on him, all this glamour makes an impression on the mind that there is something outside there. And where does this come from? The Goisha world it comes from. That there is a certain, but it, but let's not let even, before we mention the Goisha world, just think a minute. What is this telling us? What is this picture telling us? This picture is telling us there is a certain success out there. And when we say out there, we don't mean in the street in Rehova Gripas, where they're sitting around doing nothing. We mean out there means out of our Dalit Amas, out of our, when we pick up our heads from the Gemur, there is something, there is a success out there. And not just somebody tells you, you read it in a book, you see with your eyes the success, the whole chitzonius and the whole beauty and the whole glamour of that success. And you see the whole olam standing there, all wearing hats and jackets and enjoying it so much. And what impression does it make? And what does the Yetzirah say? He's standing on the side, smiling and enjoying himself. I made it. I'm smart, the HR says. I can bring impressions on a, on a holy bentara from the back door. I could bring in impressions that say that there is something outside of the base medrash. And I, that's what was bothering me. And that's what made me feel bad. And I mamish felt it. Yeah, look, this guy made it. This guy really made it. And all the outside, the, 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 the impressions that they make with the, with the colors and the, and the light. It helps to get that to that. No, where does it all come from? It all comes from this Kaylee. No, so did, did the Gdole Ador, the Gdole Vitzadik Ador, did they know what they're talking about? Or they didn't know what they're talking about? They know what they're talking about. And we're not talking about Dreyfa iPhone. That we're not talking about. That's not no way to us, Baruch Hashem. I don't have to, don't have to talk about that. It's a whole different thing. Talking about a kosher iPhone and watching something could be a whole and I'm saying what my feeling was. And this reminds me of another story that happened to me. Years uh, ago. Uh, speak up, Rabbi Kaplan. Years ago, that my mother in law, I once had a mother in law, and, and, and I mentioned in passing that when I was a child, before we came to Eretz Yisrael, I once saw on the television The Prince and the Pauper. It was a play by Mark Twain about the Prince and the Pauper that switched. They looked alike, and many, many years later, I found out who was the source of this idea. Yeah, you know. Rabbeinu. Yeah. I don't know, Mark Twain knew of Rabbi, you know, I don't know. So, so, but maybe it was in the air. So, so the prince and the puppet, I mentioned that it was a beautiful movie. Oh, very and good, Gishmai. So she was much very nice of her that she brought me a video of the next trip of the prince and the puppet. So what can I do if she brings it? So we actually watched it in her apartment here. And we watched it. It's a long movie. I think it's two hours. And 
the truth that after I watched it, I, I said a few lessons you could learn from. There are a few, more than one lesson, maybe three or four lessons, about about godless Odom and about Malchus and about the difference between a melech and a pauper. And then of the pauper, even when he comes to Malchus, he does not handle Malchus. He stays a pauper, he stays a low, a low pauper. Yeah, how much I gave about it yeah, once by this poem I talked about. Rabbi Kaplan, what? this idea that you can't change, this is Mama's the theme of the Rebbe story, Kiyodua. Yeah, right, right, that they, they changed. They changed, but he, he had the nimus of a... Ah, that idea also, ah, the whole idea that even though he, he became, he went into the palace, but he stayed with the nimusim of a pauper. Right. So, so, but mommy, but here you see it. You see with your eyes how you, you, you see every all the movement, all the the nuances of it. They did it with such kishun. Every nuance of 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 pauperism that they were able to to show on the movie. Not just like you say it. You see it. You see how he moves around. You see how he how he gestures. You you can see that he's a boy. He's not a prince. He's not Malchus. So, but but I after watching it, it, it stayed in my mind uh, for days and days. After it, these pictures were were haunting me. They were. I was seeing them in my mind. These pictures. Now. That is what's wrong with it. That is why this is not the right thing. That something looking at pictures and enjoying pictures is not the thorough way. Yeah, I'm very, I'm being very extreme. And I know that I might be Nixa again in it. And it's it's very, very Mosheikh, it's very drawing, it's very hard to get away from it once you have this this gadget that you could look at things. The HR of looking at pictures and I'm talking about kosher pictures is very, very strong. And 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 we have to know and and bechlal to start saying, well, what do you want? You should live in a cellar. What do you want? All these kind of things. It all comes from the that we don't remember what we came here for. We came and we're not here forever. I saw a letter from the Lubavitcher Rebbe. They wrote to somebody to be a, a letter of Nichum Avelim. So he said them like this. The Nishama was here from before Bria Solom. The Nishma Sam Shal Yisrael were all over Machshava. They were there already before the world was created. That means the Nishama was here already 5,700 years later, or 5,000 5, years, the Nishama was here. The Nishama, when it leaves this body, it's going to be Nitzchias forever and ever. It's going to stay around it. Either Ganet or Ganem, whatever it is, but the Neshama will always continue to exist. <laughs> so what? So, so what are we talking about? This little bit, these, these, these seventy, eighty, ninety years in between, it's small, small compared to, to what was before and what was afterwards. You're gonna forever and ever exist. What are you gonna take with you? You're gonna take with you the hours and the minutes of your life and what is, what's it going to show that you are sitting and watching pictures I mean that that we, we have to know that we have to know what we came here for you, you can't say mutter or also and mutter it's mutter I'm looking at kosher pictures but what about what about what's your life what are you here for it, it brings this, this kind of it's, the impressions are so strong from pictures and with especially moving pictures, videos, the impression is so strong that, that you forget that there is such a question, like, what am I here for? I don't want to say I'm not such a tzaddik that asks myself these questions. But but it came to me, this this machshove came to me well, after seeing this movie, this this uh, 15 minutes on Motsoy Shabbos. It made, a, it made me think, it brought me to think these things. 
And I said, I should help us. Everybody should find his own way. And 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 and, and be so good to go in the right there. And we should use up our time the right way. And we should be so good that we shouldn't come back with Bush to the next world. Yeah. Okay, Rabbi Kaplan. Thank you very much.